We're driving an Audi RS6 Avant. It's a roughly 600 horsepower all-wheel drive wagon. Coming up, we're gonna have Evy floor this thing from a stop. But first, let's begin with interior. I like that there's layers of luxury. When you first get in and you turn on the vehicle, there's a big roar from the engine. Mm -hmm. The speakers rise up majestically. There's a little spectacle to it. You touch the steering wheel and the gear selector and they're made of that suede-like material. As long as you don't look at all this shiny black plastic, you feel very luxurious. And I am getting some reflections right here from this really nice metallic trim. We also have this stuff that's like a carbon twill, they call it. It's oh. kind of like the open poor wood trim of carbon fiber. Oh, and we've also got this Dynamica $3,000 headliner. And I was like, I don't know if I'd spend $3,000 on it, but that's feel nice. I love the look and feel of this material, but it's also in the back seat, in the door panels. And I really wonder if you had a family rolling around in here with applesauce pouches. And Sticky fingers. Man. <laughs> We're looking at you, kiddo. Notice she said, right now. <laughs> One thing I noticed is that there's a lack of small storage here. We've got a screen where oftentimes there might be a bin to set your phone. Instead, you've got this little center console area that's basically just thick enough for a phone and a pair of flying eye sunglasses. Otherwise, you're gonna wind up using the cup holders and they're pretty small cup holders. This is very European spec. You go to the doors here, there is bottle storage, but it's very hard for me to get it out without really flexing. Oh no. You know I hate to flex. <laughs> oh hey, what's that? Is that a bird? Oh my. <laughs> These front seats I find offer really good lateral support and unlike some sports seats where the bolsters come out too far to show you how bolstered they are and then they impede your elbows when you're steering, that is not the case here. I've got full range of motion and yet it's still holding me in place. These seats are really a highlight in adjustability and comfort. It's really helpful for somebody with short little legs to reach the pedals. Seated behind my ideal front seat position, I find Find plenty of knee room, good foot clearance too. My feet fit underneath the front seat and head clearance is great as well. I think four adults would fit very comfortably in an Audi RS6 Avant. That, but don't put them in the middle. Don't put them in that middle. Kiddo, how did you find sitting in the middle position? There's not enough um, foot space on top of the hump for her little feet to go there. And she's got very little feet. That's a temporary spot, even if you have a little person. They'll make that noise, like some sort of distressed care bear. <laughs> On another positive note though, uh, not only are there rear vents back there, there are bonus vents in the pillars as well. Let's talk about cargo space. It's 30 cubic feet and for comparison, that's the exact same amount you'd get in a Mazda CX-5. For perspective, it's about what you'd expect from a compact SUV, which is a good amount of space. Instead of being vertical space, it's horizontal space, which is hugely beneficial if you're hauling groceries that you can't stack vertically on top of one another. And we also have 40, 20, 40, split fold seats, which give it a lot more flexibility. If you want to take three friends to go buy a hat rack, <laughs> you certainly can. By the way, there's a standard power hatch. And if you're wondering about underfloor area, when you look under there, you'll find a tire repair kit, which is a little bit off-putting for me because we live in a mountain area where tire slashes and punctures are not uncommon. Conversely, I don't know how you'd necessarily make the room for a 21-inch wheel and tire combo back there. Now, kiddo, how do you find getting in and out of the Audi RS6 Avant. I find it pretty easy. I should be smooth because it's very And what about getting the child seat installed? The latch points are covered by two removable plastic pieces, so it's very easy to get them out of the way, but then again, it's easy to lose them. Otherwise, it's very simple to install the car seat. I wonder about a rear-facing car seat. It does seem like it might be large enough. Based on my knee space, I bet you could get a uh, rear-facing child seat back there without issue. As for safety, neither the NHTSA nor IIHS have rated the RS6 Avant. However, the A6 Allroad, which is very, very similar in design, it's basically the same vehicle, but taller, uh, rated five-star from the NHTSA. We can infer that the RS6 would handle a crash pretty darn well. Whoa. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't want Test it well out time. <laughs> the cross truck guy's like, prove it. <laughs> <laughs> now, if he had crashed into us, there would have been 10 airbags to protect us. In addition to that, active safety features include automatic emergency braking and lane departure warning, but I don't believe lane keeping assist. Family, what do we think? Is the Audi RS6 Avant family friendly? Small, rich family friendly. Rear window test. 
Oh, uh, almost all the way down. Boop. Armrest test. Driving in a comfortable eight and four, I do like that this inner armrest can move forward and back. It's a little bit of a reach if I wanna keep my hands on the steering wheel. Inboard, that's a fairly firm perch with a little bit of give and same deal on the outside, but I find that workable. If it was a little bit more accessible, I'd give higher numbers. I'm gonna go 80% inboard, 70% outboard. Hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family, plus the occasional helicopter adventure? If so, you're welcome to subscribe. And if you really like what we're doing, you can always join our channel. Onward to style. It is almost a caricature of a sporty wagon. <laughs> Could it be any lower or longer or wider? It actually looks like the artwork that they use to show what a new car looks like. Yes! Anytime you see like, here's what the new Honda Civic looks like, it's like, wow, it looks great. And then you see it in person, it's like, Poof, it's all tall. I can't imagine what the artwork looks like for this thing. It's just a horizontal line. All of the right levers are being pulled for me to love this vehicle. And then you make it a wagon and it becomes doubly cool. I'm a big believer in this kind of inverse presentation versus reality reality concept where the more tough somebody's trying to look, the weaker they feel inside. And this is such a confident vehicle because it's like, yeah, I carry my kids in the back. And a lot of it too. Yeah, what a baller move. A couple other elements enhancing the design are those big 21 inch wheels. And we've got those uh, summer tires from Hankook on them. And then there's the lower silver elements, which visually make it look even thinner, enhancing that sense of width. One odd bit on this particular build, we have $8,500 worth of carbon ceramic brakes and the calipers are gray. If you spend that much money on the brakes, get the bright colored calipers and they do offer it in both red and blue, so maybe go with the red. We're feeling pretty positive about the look of the Audi RS6 Avant, but what do you think? Do you like the look of the RS6 Avant? If so, if no, tell us in the comment section. In motion! The standard suspension, the Audi RS6 Avant, is an air suspension and it can raise and lower the vehicle. The version we have is the dynamic ride control suspension, which uses steel springs, so you don't have the adjustable ride height, but it does have adaptive dampers. And I'm saying a lot of words. What you need to know is that it has this interesting interconnected system where the right rear goes to the front left and is connected by oil reservoirs. Dynamic ride control minimizes pitch and roll when you're coming through corners, even in the most comfortable setting. It's not like you're ever really hiding all of the bumps, but that is part of a vehicle like this, is you want to know that you're connected with the road. But you can amplify that, so if I go into the RS mode here, you immediately feel it. So hearing more exhaust noise right now, and the steering has gotten heavier. Despite some slight firmness from the suspension, I found this to be a very stable, sedate cruiser. Also note that we have the optional $1,000 sport exhaust. <laughs> that that <Wow>. like, <laughs> You have that combination of the auditory input and then also the visceral thrust of being pushed back in your seat. It all comes together to make it really feel fast. Fast? Is it fast? Yes. It's fast. <laughs> We've got a variable ratio steering rack. The ratio is a little slower on center for stability, and then the more you turn off center, the quicker it gets. So you have that combination of agility and stability, which I call stability. There's also a torque vectoring rear differential that helps apportion torque to the appropriate tire to help move you around the corners. And then we've got standard all-wheel drive, and with all-wheel drive traction, we can really put the power to the ground coming out of the corners. One thing I'm missing is maybe a little bit more data through the steering wheel, the kind of thing where maybe it's kind of pulling this way or that way as you drive over the road. A little bit more feedback would be nice. Nonetheless, this is a very effective tool for hauling. I'm gonna put it back in normal mode for a second. And as we do that, I really like how the eight-speed automatic transmission makes those gear changes. They're speedy, but in no way abrupt, which speaks to one of the core traits of the RS6 Avant, which is that it is a serious performance machine. However, if I hand the keys to my wife, she can have a normal experience. And before we get my wife's impression, these carbon ceramic brakes are difficult to modulate smoothly. In particular, I found it hard to come to a smooth stop because the creep function fights against the uh, the brakes, and it's just really difficult to manage those two different forces and really bring it down to that smooth stop. All right, that's what I think about driving the Audi RS6 Avant. What does Sweetie think? Evie's at the wheel. In the beginning of the video, I teased she was going to drive this thing very quickly from a stop, come to a stop, and we're going to do a hard acceleration. Three, two, one, punch it. 
We Does this feel powerful ah, to you? I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I don't mind when you're driving, but when I'm driving, it's too much. It's a very funny reaction. <laughs> Do you think when they were doing the <laughs> user tests on the RS6 with the uh, consumers, <laughs> they're like, we want them to feel so much power that the reaction is... <laughs> ah, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me flip it around. Uh, when you're not driving with the accelerator already pressed, all the way pressed, does it feel overwhelming? Earlier in the week when I was driving it around by myself, I really enjoyed driving this. It felt like I had enough power, but it didn't feel out of control. It felt very stable. You can hand the keys to virtually anyone and they can drive it like a normal person. But then, or... <laughs> then if you want to drive it like a bat, that is completely available to you. No, thank you. How do you find steering this thing? It turns swiftly, but not in a way that feels unstable. Now, one thing that we've got here in the RS6 Avant that I think is super cool is four-wheel steering. Did you notice any of that in terms of maneuverability? When I took this to the grocery store, I really noticed it maneuvering around the parking lot. It feels very easy to steer. Yeah, the four-wheel steering offers a very tight turning circle, and then also at higher speeds, the rear wheels turn in the same direction as the front wheels, uh, which increases stability. And then what about visibility? Any issues seeing out? All the windows are very large, so I feel like I have good visibility all around. So if you were in the market for a luxury sedan with the power of a supercar, would you feel comfortable driving this? Do I also have an absurd amount of money? In this scenario, yes. Yay, I'm in. <laughs> okay, she's in. All right, I'm getting back to the driver's seat. Overall, we have a performance vehicle that can also masquerade as a family vehicle. Win, win. Onward to remarks infotainment we've got two screens 10.1 inches up top 8.6 inches down below the top one handles all the infotainment details and then down below we've got climate controls when i first got in i found this difficult to use because it had the haptic function activated so you have to push to a certain pressure you could tap a thing and then it would or would not necessarily activate so you can deactivate that and that's what i did and now I like it much more. The graphics are really crisp. There's different colors to differentiate the different functionality. Easy to navigate the menu. The HVAC controls, I can see why they went with this setup. It looks very sleek and luxurious, but I'd rather have a series of buttons. <laughs> One screen element I did like was the 360 degree camera system, that little around spinny visualization thing. Now it's kiddo's time to shine. Kiddo, tell us what is your favorite feature of the Audi RS6 Avant? Not only can you see what people look like based on their heat rather than their light, but if you drive around in a mountain community that's filled with like deer and mountain lions and bobcats and stuff, you can see them at night. Night vision. And if you're the kind of person who appreciates excellent visibility in all conditions, you might also appreciate flying eye sunglasses. Ratch resistant polycarbonate lenses are virtually idiot proof. Meanwhile, their patented resilamide construction means them light, thin, durable, and bendable. Whether you're a pilot, a driver, or a haunting heat signature on an Audi's display, flying eyes are the perfect eyewear. Click the link in the description below and you can save 10% using the promo code MICA, flying eyes. All right, let's talk engine choices. The RS6 we're driving is the 2023 model. It's got a four liter twin turbocharged V8 with an eight speed automatic transmission, big power, marginal fuel economy, which explains the $1,000 gas guzzler charge. Sweetie. Yeah. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Sure. Our trim recommendation is which trim will give you the essential features you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. For our trim recommendation, the base RS6 Avant comes with smart key access, four zone climate control, ventilated and heated front seats. It's fine as is, but personally we'd add the $2,250 driver assistance package because any modern car should be able to keep itself in its own lane if the driver momentarily is distracted. Total cost, $121,150. And if you're ready to buy an Audi RS6 Avant of your very own, click the Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below. That'll tell you what your current car is worth and how much you should spend on an RS6 Avant. For the 2024 model year, Audi updated the RS6 Avant to make it the performance model. That's the only one you can get. It includes more power, there are some trim changes, and a bump in the base price. As for competitors, consider the Mercedes AMG E63 S Wagon, the Porsche Panamera Turbo S. If you like this general shape, but you just want to save a bunch of money, the Audi A6 Allroad. That's much cheaper. 
Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comments section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Audi RS6 Avant, it is a fast and thrilling way to spend time with the family. To us, it is the Mario Kart family night of luxury wagons, if Mario Kart cost $150,000. Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the Audi RS6. May have a five and a five, and you, come get your high five. Bam, big corner. Whee.